has lots of uh, beautiful artwork, most of which you've done, loads of trees. So we're going to have a, a scavenger hunt afterwards for how many uh, trees there are in this place. Trees and leaves. So thank you very much. And thank you very much, Guy, for coming to talk. And you'll tell us what your the tobacco is. Um, and also just uh, Romeo and Juliet, I'm until the end of January, I am promoting 100 shekel tickets. And talk to me about Jewish meditation and um, start knitting now. <laughs> Good evening, all. Thank you for having me. Um, I should explain my background so that you'll, you'll understand my perspective, because there are different psukim, there's different ways of reading psukim, there's different ways of reading life, and it has a lot to do with one's perspective. And my perspective is, is somewhat, well, I'll let you decide what it is. I, I was born in Israel, actually in Jerusalem. I grew up here until I was 12, and then when I was 12, we moved to Los Angeles. Um, after eight years in Los Angeles, where I graduated from high school and college, I came back at age 20, I came back to Israel, and I, was in a, I, I went to the army. I was an officer in the army. <coughs> I got married, I went back to America, did my, my master's in political science, and worked for a few more years. I was about three years, and then I came back to Israel. And when I came back to Israel, I had the opportunity to go to Yeshiva, actually to Kolel, at Rav Mordechai Liao's Kolel, which is uh, it's an interesting perspective because I didn't grow up so religious. But throughout the years, I've become more and more religious. And seeing perspective from Rav Mordechai Liao, who was a real mensch, he, he knew how to look at each person and their, and their wants and their needs, it really taught me a lot. I think I learned, I learned a lot of Torah during those five or six years that I, that I learned there every day from 9 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock at night. I learned a lot of Torah. But I learned a lot of Derech Eretz also from my rabbis and from the people that I was around. After, after that stint, I knew I, that I needed to do something else. Our business in America was already finished. We worked, uh, my father had a business for uh, customized wheelchairs. So I worked with the elderly. I worked with a lot of people who are neglected by, by their families, by their life. In America, it's very common that the, the family members are put in a nursing home and then they're just there. And the family doesn't visit a lot. And uh, sometimes even they take their money. It starts off because of insurance reasons and sometimes it continues on. And I saw a lot of neglected people, people who, who did not have a voice. And out of that, I, I always looked to relate to people who don't have a voice. And the way that I found, is actually I think it found me, is in the mental health field. And I opened with a friend of mine. We both opened a rehabilitative yeshiva for people with mental illness. And when my friend approached me and said, let's open this uh, yeshiva, I said, well, there isn't. Why isn't there a place for people with mental illness, <coughs> mental illness to, to go and learn? And I said, Excuse me, I'm sorry, in America or here you're talking? In here, okay. here in Yerushalayim. Wow. And six years ago we went and I, and I looked if there's a need, and there was a big need. Uh, six years ago we opened our first branch, and our first branch uh, was in Rehavia, in Yad Arab Nisim. We opened, we had six students when we started off, and uh, we expanded since we've moved from Yad Arab Nisim to Shimoni, to the end of the street, the end of the street right there. To Shimoni, uh, number 20, uh, right in my neighborhood. I grew up in. I grew up on a Tkufa, three. So um, it's uh, very appropriate that we're doing the shield here. And we have, we have uh, 50 students in Yerushalayim, we have 60 students in Bnei Brak, and we have 20 more students in Rehovot. And we, we do a lot of different things in rehabilitation. We have a rehabilitative yeshiva for people with mental illness. We also do support and employment. And our latest venture, which is what leads me to environmentalism, because, hey, how did I even get to environmentalism uh, until now, is we opened a transitional employment center. It's called Botanica, and it's a garden shop. It's located in the Tachana, in the Tachana Tarkevet, right next to Fresh. 
it's a beautiful geodesic dome. You see it? And we have people, uh, we have uh, workers that many of them are dealing with mental illness. And this is their first step back into, into uh, employment and back into society. And our goal is for that to be a temporary employment, for them to go and integrate back into society. Some of what we do is also community outreach. And we try to do more and more, and we're working on it with the, with the Jerusalem Botanical Gardens. Botanic Gardens, I was told to say. Jerusalem Botanic Gardens. And, and uh, the Tachanah is very supportive. We're involved with uh, Hebrew University, and we're trying to make something, something big, and we're trying to get things together. Last week, we had a very exciting day. Uh, because on the same day, we had products that we made, and that we sold to Kiryat Ono, to their occupational therapy uh, graduates. They got a, they received a gift, gift, and sometimes it's Israeli it comes out. And uh, and uh, we also that same day we had an activity in a gun in Beta Kevin, and two of our workers with with our manager from Botanica, they went and they planted with the kids, and it's a three series meeting where they go in and they, and they explain to the kids about the environment and, and about planting and about many different things and how a person is connected to the environment. And it's a win-win-win situation where we go in and we work and uh, to the two workers have a severe depression. And I think both of them uh, deal with that. But they're very capable and they're very happy and they're looking for a way out. And they were very... Uh, very scared to go out and work with the kids. What do we do? And once they got started, everybody had a great time. Kids had a great time, the Ganesh had a great time, and our people had a great time, our workers. And this is their steps into rehabilitation, and this is where the money goes. The money goes, the tzedakah goes to Botanica, so we can have more activities, and we can, we can have the support staff, because we have social workers, and we have uh, professionals uh, with, the stu with the workers trying to get them a personal rehabilitation plan and get their steps so they have a nice trail into rehabilitation. Okay, so... I have a question for, yes. for the yeshiva. Yes. How old are the, like the 50 people in the yeshiva, how old are they? What are the Between, age we work with the Ministry of Health and uh, under, we're, uh, provide, we provide a service under the basket of services, Sal Shikum. And the age range for that is from age 19 until 65. So we have all different age ranges. Uh, we have from different places, you know, in, in society. We have Haredim, uh, we have the Tim Leumiim, we have some Chilonim walk, uh, found their way over because it's an intellectual stimulation which many people don't have in other rehabilitation places. And we're very proud of uh, our innovations. I, I was very fortunate to go and speak about this uh, around the world, in Boston and in Australia and in uh, England about, about the way that we try to culturally adapt rehabilitation. And I think the adaptation things, that's where my holistic view looks, and I think that it will come out in the shirt today, and uh, in the shoes. The shoes was before not. Oh, yeah, that's right. I said in the shirt. Do you have another shoot We have more sheets right there. Um, and so the tzedakah for this week is like you wanted to go to Botanica? Tzedakah this week, I wanted to go to Botanica. I think this is, it's the clearest way of seeing rehabilitation. I think that because we're speaking about the environment, I think that's the more appropriate way. And uh, we hope that with, uh, within two years, it will be a profitable venture where we will sell enough, enough products and we'll have enough, uh, enough income to pay for itself. For now, it's not profitable yet. Uh, we we have a lot of we have staff and we have workers that we have to pay for and, and there's a lot of expenses but we're plugging along and our business plan is far reaching and we're looking ahead. Your yes. profits are garden plants. Yeah. What are your what are your products? The products are garden plants. Yeah. Uh, the products are also gardening. The boys. We're we're trying to develop gardening as well. You mean people who will go and garden? people who will go and garden for. Uh, uh, for uh, Vat Bait, for example. There's a Vat Bait and we'll offer our services and we're developing those business plans right now. And uh, we're trying to see what kind of uh, product we can do. And we do, we, we've, we've done some uh, projects as well, some planting projects. And this is where we're trying to get. Uh, That's like a byproduct. 
It's a, your, it's product a is really, your, your product it's a is really product. the rehabilitation. It, you're yeah. absolutely right. When I when I'm I, talking I, about profit and product, exactly, I mean exactly, exactly. There's the there's the business aspect of we have product. Our and real goal is rehabilitation. Absolutely. Goal. But, but what is amazing is that the fact that you've got people who are emotionally, mentally um, disturbed, not yep. whatever. Dealing with Challenge. Challenge. And working, Challenge. Honest. But working with the hands and working with the soil is really very Absolutely. good for rehabilitation. And the fact that they're producing something that can be bought is also Absolutely. something they actually earn. Yes. So they're they, earning as well. They're earning as well. Excellent. They're earning as well. But they're they're not earning minimum wage because it's a training program. But, it, they're, but they're earning something. They they receive fifteen shekels an hour, and it's it's part of. I don't want it to be. I, I also, I, because it's a, a, temp, a temporary program, I'd like them to feel the need to go and move forward. And they gain basic skills of, you know, talking to customers, helping customers, doing. And it's, uh, it's really lovely to see how, how they're developing and growing. Yes? How, how do you get the people? Meaning, do you get them by doctors right now? Well, or, and no, second, yes. Second, what's the general split? How many men, how many women? Well, in, in our yeshiva, we have 100% men. We are thinking of a women's uh, program, but uh, we don't have enough, uh, enough women interested in learning in that structure. But we will do, we, we're trying to find funding to, to start seed. We're trying to find seed funding to start a program two or three times a night for women uh, to study, to spend a day or a night working on that. In the employment, we have many women. Uh, I think we have 50-50 women in the employment, in the supported employment uh, uh, field that we have. And the, the, the referrals. The referrals, uh, doctors, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists. I walk into, into the hospitals, the mental health hospitals, I'm like a celebrity. <laughs> oh, I'm guy, I'm guy. And a lot of people know me. And uh, they know our staff. And we try to reach out to a lot of people that don't have another path into rehabilitation. This is what we try to look at, we try to look at paths. And now? I'm just, I'm going to find you, personally find you the, the women. Absolutely. Okay, so start the women's issue. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. We'll speak. Excellent. Um, I spoke about this, uh, actually this topic was, was very good because I, I had this, I spoke about this topic in Ranan a few weeks ago. And it started off at, uh, it starts off really with uh, the famous pasuk ki adam etza sadeh, and we've heard this ki adam etza sadeh. We've heard this pasuk many many times last week, all the time. We heard the songs, we heard we heard the tales, we heard everything. We heard all the comparisons of how a person is like a tree, a person is like the, the tree in the in the, in the field, which is a funny place for a tree to be, right? In the field. Mm -hmm. Like a tree, as a sadeh, you know, it's a, we shouldn't, shouldn't the tree be in a forest or an orchard? Or, yeah. So, the, the pasuk from Tvarim, um, it starts off with uh, when Am Yisrael comes into the land, land of Israel. Ki tatsu al ir yamim rabim leilachem ala letufsa, lo tashkit et etza lindoch ala berzen, you should not destroy the trees, ki mimen al tuchel, you, because you shall eat from it, and you should not uh, tear it down. That's the pasuk, and it continues on. And Rashi says that if you read through the pasuk, it actually means that a tree is not a person, and you should read it as a question. Why would you cut down a tree? that hasn't done anything to you. If you go to war with a city, you should, you should do what you need to conquer the city. But why should you, why should you go and, con and, and destroy trees just for nothing? Is a tree a person to come and threaten you? A tree will not get up and kill you. A tree will not get up and siege you. The tree will stay there. So Rashi says, it's a question. Is the tree a person? Can you scare a tree? 
You can't scare a tree. What are you going to do? You're going to cut off its branches to scare the rest of the, the rest of the trees not scare to start off? If you scare a Jerusalem tree, just say it's about to smoke. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. <laughs> so he says, why should you... And it starts off, and Rashi says, the Pasuk says, why, why destroy something for nothing? If you get benefit out of it, oh, fine. We can understand, we can pay the benefit against the cost, but why, why destroy something for nothing? That's, that's the question that Rashi explains in the Pasuk. And then Ibn Ezra says, I don't think I, he, he brings he brings with Rashi, and then he says, I don't think all of this. He says, the life of a person is a tree. Uh, Rashi says, you shouldn't destroy the trees because it's, it doesn't make any sense. You don't gain anything by it. Ibn Ezra says, worse than that, you lose. Because if you go and you cut down the, the fruit trees, okay, so you won the war, or you won the battle, but you're going to lose the war. What now? What are you going to eat now? If you destroy the trees, instead of, instead of, uh, instead of enjoying the trees, instead of keeping the trees alive, and keeping the, the fruits on the trees, then you've lost. So Ibn Ezra doesn't just say that it's a stupid thing to cut down the trees because, the, because they don't come against you. It's also not a wise thing because you're not thinking ahead. Now, both, of, both Rashi and the Ibn Ezra, they're, they're, looking, they're looking at the benefit for the person. Rashi says, you shouldn't destroy the trees because they're not going to harm you. You don't get any benefit from scaring off the trees. Ibn Ezra says, even more, let's take a step forward. You use the trees. You conquer the city, and then it's all, it's all ready for you. It's right there for you. Cheskuni says the same thing. He says it flat out. You shouldn't destroy the trees, and then you should use the trees. Because so this, is, this is a little more uh, it's, uh, subjective. You know? The trees are my subjects. The trees are for me to use. I'm using the trees. I'm not, I don't really care about the trees. But I'm using them for my benefit, and where do I find most benefit is, is where I'm going to use them. And if I would need the trees to cut them down, I'll cut them down. If, if I get benefit from that, I will do that as well. Um, the Sifri also brings, uh, and, and you see over here in number six, he says that it's, it's a mitzvah. Ki mitzvat mitzvah ase v'oto lo tichrat mitzvah lo It's not just logic, it's not just good practice. It's also a mitzvah, so it's, yeah, that's a different level. I, I read a lot about, about uh, eco-Judaism. Eco eco-Judaism. So what's eco-Judaism? So you don't, like, you don't just look at the benefit uh, that you get or the benefit to the environment. It's not about benefit. You know, a lot of times we say we need to protect the environment because if we don't protect the environment, we won't have oxygen to breathe and we won't have... Food, food to eat, and you know all these things that are beneficial to us. But once you bring it into the level of the mitzvah, then it's a completely different level. You don't just do it because you have benefit from it. You do it because it's a godly command. You must do it, even if it's not your benefit. It's a different level. It's not a. It's not a. What do I gain out of it? It's a different perspective altogether. It takes you and your benefit out of the picture. So if, you're, if you perceive your benefit to be to destroy all the trees, because I have some other form of making oxygen, let's say I have an oxygen maker, so I don't need any more trees, still, God says that you should not destroy the trees. That's flat out, that's what the that Sifri says. So why then? If it's not a fruit tree, you are allowed to use it. So, you know, all things about the trees goes away when, when it's not a fruit tree. Well, Which means it doesn't give you benefit, and you can do whatever you want. Well, we'll see. Until now, you're right. you're right. Until now, we've seen that it's really about benefit. The Sifri brings and, and says it's a different level. It's not only about the benefit. And we're going to see. We're going to see how, how it evolves further on. As a side note, I want to I want to talk as we're before we move on to the uh, to the uh, to the different mefarshim uh, and to continue about the. Uh, area of environmentalism, I want to speak something about next week's parsha. Here you have the Torah, just a free Torah for Parsha Mishpatim. 
I remember it because I only only because I had to write something about it for uh, for a pamphlet for a Shabbat pamphlet. So I I always look at the Barashat Mishpatim. It's very interesting when people when Am Yisrael comes into the land and Hashem says, "When I will bring you into the land, I will destroy the nations around you. I will send the the hornet at Tzira'ah. The Tzira'ah will fight the nations, and you will conquer the, the nations." And it says. You will not conquer the nations quickly. You will conquer them slowly, slowly. When you come in, Ben Tirbe Alefa Chayat So the animal in the field will not will not overtake you. Simple understanding is, if there are people, and now there's no people, so the animals use the vacuum and they'll come in, and it's going to be dangerous. That's a it's a very understandable and simple and simple explanation. If there were people scaring off the animals. And now there's a void, then animals will come in, and then okay, so you, you get rid of the people, but now you have to deal with animals. <coughs> and so that's why you have to conquer slowly, slowly. You conquer slowly, slowly, and you and you get a place, and then you inhabit, you, it. inhabit it, and then the animals will not come. But it didn't make sense. It never made sense to me because if we hear of such miracles where the hornets, they the they stand, and the Midrash says they stand at Ever Erden, and they spit out uh, fire, and it's like, really, it's like hellfire missiles. And if you look at the Midrash, with today's eyes, you see cobras, in the helicopters, mm -hmm. with hellfire okay. missiles, and they just, choo, 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 they're just spitting it out. You can totally see it in the Midrash, if you don't look at the Tzir'ah itself. So if we have this, these kind of miracles, so where we have to worry about the animals, can't the animals also be subjected to, to Hashem's will? Well, why would the animals go, go about and, uh, and threaten the people? And I saw a Pirush, and the Pirush says that you should not conquer the land quickly so that you will not become animalistic. You should become that's within you. Because if you, get, if you destroy too quickly, if you conquer too quickly, if you succeed too quickly, you can lose yourself in success. Mm. You can lose yourself in, in going and, and you, lose, you lose your own tzela melokim. You start conquering, you start killing, you get used to killing, you get used to conquering, you get used to driving over people. I think it's also true in business, it's also true in life. A lot of times they, they, people warn us about, about uh, you know, failures. If you have a failure, take it in perspective. Don't worry, things will be okay. You'll go through it. People fail in life and then they succeed. People don't often talk about the, the dangers of success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you succeed. And the success, success in itself, if it's not taken clearly, then it comes out and, and you end up losing. I think it's part of this also. Conquering of, of the land of Israel, when you come into your home, to your land of Israel, you should not go, not go out and destroy everything around you. You should look at what you're, where you're going to live and what's around you. And the trees are part of this life. And when you start looking at trees as important as well, then you start getting perspective also. But if trees are important, at least according to my point of view, Kalvachomer people are important. So you, you take a look at that. That's, that's part of the conquering of the land. So that was a side, side note just to explain about the conquering and about taking perspective. There's, there's a long sefer of Chinuch, number seven, says, uh, what you mentioned, it speaks of not destroying fruit trees. Not all trees, but specifically fruit trees. And, and he says, and, and he, it's beautifully the way that he, that he brings it out, and he says, says sefer of Chinuch, that we don't want to destroy we should not, we should not hurt their feelings. The people in the city, the people in the city, they planted their trees. It's the beauty of their of their trees. Okay, so you have to go and conquer their city, but you don't have to hurt their their, their hearts. It's achzariut to go out and, and destroy the trees that the people planted. But you're allowed to kill them, the people. You're allowed, you're allowed to kill them. 
Just Cure don't hurt their feelings. Cure them without hurting their feelings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cure them without hurting their feelings. <laughs> war is war. Well, nice. That's that wasn't the rules it. of engagement anyway well. when they conquered Israel, you know. Yeah, the rules were uh, they, could, yeah. they could run away, they can do it with it. If they stand. <laughs> uh, it depends. If, not the if, if they stay. If they don't Only if they, don't they stayed leave. after you tried to make peace. After you went and discussed with them, etc., and then they were told it's going to be war. And they also had an escape route. So if after yes. all that, and there's, there's people left escape. in the city, then yeah, pulling their trees out after all that, that would be kind of horrible, yes. I can understand why, why Sefer Achimuch brings that, actually. Very much so. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's just like Yetzirah Mitzrayim. Uh, Mitzrayim, there's the whole question of 400 years, 430 years, and there for 210 years. Why? Because the Mitzrayim just, didn't just do their job. Pleasure. They loved it. They loved torturing the people. So they took extra pleasure in it, so that was day and night, so it, it doubled the time. So Sefer Achinuk continues and says that from that, uh, From this we learn the general subject of Bat Tashchit. And we all know Bat Tashchit. Bat Tashchit is not to destroy your clothes, and not to destroy, uh, not to take, not to take uh, even a uh, um, bowl and throw it on the floor. If you take a bowl and you throw it in the floor, stam. Uh, let's say you you're angry, and you and you take something and you smash it at the wall. Yeah. But the shrit, it's a love. You're not allowed to just destroy things. Well, and and you, not waste, right? you should not waste. Exactly, it's a waste. waste. Yeah. You should not waste. You should not waste for nothing. And and this is Sefer Chinuch says that it comes from here. It comes from the trees. That from not destroying the tree comes out. Not wasting, and this is how you see the, the connection of the environmentalism is not just about trees, it's not just about planting trees, it's a holistic approach to everything around you. And even in that case, even this is part of environmentalism. If I take care of this and I don't destroy it, and I make sure that this, is, this, is, uh, this stays in good shape, I'm fulfilling the mitzvah of keeping the environment, and my environment is there's a wide way of looking at the environment, and the environment, not just on the outside, it also goes into the inside, into, your, into your own life. Is it waste if you have to build fish shesh? <laughs> but I mean, this is actually, what you're saying is actually part of the, or do you want to have questions after? No, no, it's good. This is actually part of modern, not only modern, but of environmental thinking. I mean, not Absolutely. throwing away stuff, reuse it. Reuse, you know? exactly. So, I mean, yeah. That's actually Recycling, but not yeah. repairing, yeah. like going back to what they used to be. Absolutely. That's actually... Absolutely. It's the, it's the... The whole life cycle. Reuse, reduce, and recycle. Yeah. So people don't look about at the reduce, but reduce is actually to save, to not to destroy things that are good, not to throw away things that are good. That's reduce. They look at the recycle, but they sometimes forget, reduce and reuse. So those, those things come together, absolutely, I agree completely that it's uh, part of modern thing. Uh, and, and the Sefer Chinuch explains about Shorosh HaMitzvah. What's the root of this mitzvah? Shorosh HaMitzvah Yadua. Shehu kedei lalamed nafshenu le'ehov atov v'atoelet v'lidavet bo. It's to teach ourselves to love. To, if, when you learn to care about things, you learn to care about life. You learn to love the world. When everything is important, when you don't just take, uh, take a, a, a piece of clothing and rip it, when you're not allowed to do it because of a bigger mitzvah, because of a bigger obligation of not destroying the bat you start loving little things. When you start loving little things, you start loving the world and connecting to the world. When things are important, then things are more meaningful. When things are more meaningful, life is more meaningful. And he says, And to be a chassid, to be a real tzaddik, then that's what you should, you should uh, do. You should pay attention to every little thing. And the, and the stories about the chassidim, they, didn't, they watched where they stepped, that they won't step in the ways of the animals or even the even the ants. You know, there's there's different uh, stories about different chassidim. When when the little things are important, then the world in itself becomes more important and more more uh, and you appreciate it more. Part of uh, part of the thing is, is the brachot. Brachot. The way that we do brachot 
is what do we say before? It? Before is to stop, think, and think. You stop, you think of what you have, and you think. You thank the Shem, but you also thank the world. You thank the fact that there is. You, should, you thank the Shem for giving it to you, but you also thank for, for this being here. You take a fruit, you take a piece of apple, you take an apple, and you stop for, for a split second. Say, both of Hashem, and then you eat it. Then you've stopped. And even though we do it very quickly, and sometimes we, you know, we rush through it, I know that I know that it still means something to me when I take a piece of fruit and I, and I taste it, and then I'm like, oh wait, it's a vegetable. Oh, what did I do? So it's meaningful. You see that it is meaningful, the stopping and the looking is meaningful. And this is part of what Sefer Chinuch talks about. When you stop, when you say the bracha, when you appreciate of little things, appreciate even of a, of a cup of water, you stop and you, and you, and you do a bracha for a cup of water, then you get to be appreciative of life, life in the whole. And it's a, our whole life is a series of, of teachings. Teaching ourselves how to go, and, and like says Sefer Chinuch, to stick to the good and run away from the evil. And it was just a, a comparison between the animals who don't, who just go, like when they're hungry, just go and eat, and, mm -hmm. and us, we think about it where it comes from. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 one time I was, uh, I, was watching, I was watching a show with my wife, and uh, they're sitting there, and they're, they're eating, I'm like, what? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I'm really, I've gone too far. <laughs> um... It's, it's interesting, it says, Sefer Chanuch at the end, he says, Lo chen ha-reshaim, achehem shel mazikim, the evil people that are, that are the brothers of, of the destroyers, of the mazikim, smechim ba-ashkadat ha-olam. Where is this? At, at the end, uh, so two lines the before the end of the Sefer Chanuch. <coughs> ah, sorry, at the first, end of the first paragraph. And he says, they love destroying life. They love waste. The, if you love waste, this is a sign of rasha, to love waste, to, to love seeing waste, is rishput in the, in the life. Vehem amashkutim et atzman. And they, when you destroy the world, you destroy yourself. Vehem amashkutim et atzman, b'midah she'adam modet ba, modedim lo. B'midah she'adam modet ba, modedim lo. Sema. B'midah she'adam modet ba, modedim lo. M'midah k'neged midah. M'midah she'adam modet. If a person loves, if a person doesn't look, at, at, at life and just loves waste, then his life is also wasted. His life also means nothing. If, if things don't mean anything to you, then things don't mean anything to you. And if things are important to you, then everything is important to you. And this is, this is how you find a full life. Orech yamim v'shnot chayim yosifu lach. So the Pasuk says, how can you have orech yamim v'shnot chayim? Could you have, you know, uh, you have life, you have years that are long and years that are short, and you have days that are long, days that are short. So if life is important, then the days are long, because they're filled with long things. They're things with, filled with important things. So that's how you put fulfillment into your life. And this Sefer Chinuch talks to us also about, about happiness, which is another subject that I speak about this evening. Where's this hadith from? The very nice. I think Masechet Yom. I mean, in a way, it's more about awareness, what you're talking about, right? Because if you say that things are important, they can go sure. in the other direction also, you know? Because then I say, like, oh, I love my car, I love my, I don't know, what yeah. I might have. Yeah. I don't have, but... Uh, Material. Exactly. I, so you have to find, you know, I, like... It's, you know what, I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I think, think you know what, you love your car? Well, excellent. You should be. Depends you should be happy if you have a nice car, <laughs> and you're happy with your car, you should be happy with it. Well, it's mindfulness. It's, uh, yeah. You don't even have to have a nice car. You could just be appreciating the fact yeah. that sometimes you have you to get to a place and you can get there using a vehicle. a nice car. It's not a It's not a nice car. It doesn't have to be a car. I take it. It's not an anti- doesn't get This awareness and mindfulness is not anti-materialistic. And to say that environmentalism is anti-materialistic, that's not the way we look at it. That's not the way Torah looks at it. Torah looks at the appreciative side of it. And you're right, it could lead towards, I'm going to get a nice car because this is what I need and I want, and I will destroy everybody so that I can have my, my toys. But it can also become a holistic thing. You enjoy everything that you have. And even if you have a nice car, even if you have a nice car and a nice house, fine, enjoy it. 
It's also good. I, I often think seriously when I put in the, wa the washing machine and I just blow it in and I have to look there. And I think, you know what? I, and obviously, I've always had a washing machine all my life, like as my parents, whatever. But I think about our generations, past generations, or even now, India, whether if they're going to get and use a washing, and how long would it take? And I just throw it all in and go about my business. So it's like, you know, Bol Hashem that mankind has created it. Well, um, you can you can take this on. I, I, I have a question. Yes. I mean, if we don't appreciate those things we have, on the simplest level, I'm not talking about like you said, like great cars or whatever. Just simple appreciation of the small things in life as well that we have. What kind of breakdown in our society happens as well? This well, lack of respect for some of the simple things you have. Does it could it see down to a complete disrespect for other human beings? I think absolutely, I mean, absolutely, because when when you learn, when you teach yourself not to respect, when you teach yourself that things are not important, mm -hmm. it's a very short jump to where people to are nothing not is important. Yeah. yeah, people are not important, and people's lives are not important. Oh, beautiful. I guess it's nine o'clock. <laughs> Wait, what? Well, which bird is that? King King Fisher. Fisher. Can you say the Kingfisher? Yeah. Kingfisher. <laughs> he like, what? Well, it's a really like a, a, a movie? It, 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 the Fisher yes, King? Is that a movie? Yes, it is. Look something. how many natural things there are in this house. <laughs> <laughs> and I also have a great appreciation for my washing machine and yeah. other things. Oh, we're going to hear the washing machine soon? Is no, that? I just oh. have a great appreciation for all the toys that I use that help me through my day. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to skip ahead. You. Take this home and, and look at it and uh, delve into this a little, a little further. But uh, I want to speak a little bit about uh, um, number nine, Veiko Araba. Actually, the biggest respect for objects was, was uh, in the Big Lebowski, where he told him, <laughs> you treat objects like women. <laughs> That's the biggest respect yeah. for objects? For objects. To objects. Oh, we can come say objects. Okay. Should go back and look at that uh, classic I I forgot that part of it. It's very difficult to forget it. Amar Abu Dabal Simon. This is a continuation in Vaikar Abba, number nine. V'chi afshar le'adam le'basar, le'adam basar v'adam le'eloch ochre ha'kadosh baruchu. How can a person walk in Hashem's steps? V'chi afshar le'basar v'adam le'alot b'shamayim v'lidabek ba'esh? How could you, how could we become more godly? אלא מתחילה, מתחילת בריאתו, זה לזה מדרש, ואת הבגינינג שלעולם לא נתנסק, נתעסק אלא במתה תחילה. השם פלנטד את הבגינינג. And this is what you should do. הוא הדבר ואיתה השם אלוקים גן בעדן. השם פלנטד גן עדן. And this is planting the gun, that's the first thing that השם did. And if you want to be more godly, go plant. <laughs> אף אתם שאתם נכנסים לארץ ישראל לא תתעסקון אלא במתה תחילה כי תבואו אל הארץ ומטעתם כל עץ מאכל. This is what it says. The first mitzvah of going into the land of Israel is to plant. So I said environmentalism is not just about planting, but it is about planting. It's about planting. It's about not only appreciating what there is, but on also thinking ahead and planting ahead and planting for the future. Over here, we, we start expanding environmentalism, and this is this is uh, there's a whole the whole there's a whole page on the other side. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'm going to give you highlights. The first, the first. Oh, you you have one with there's one of them with just one side, and you got it. It got stuck in the in the zero. Is it valuable? It's recycled. Yes, please. Mishnah um, Vesechet Baba Batra, it speaks about, about different, different ways of environmentalism. And environmentalism is, is also, it's Echut HaSviva, the urban environment. Not only, what about the trees and the fields and the forests, but houses. Urban, when you build, don't build too close one to another. When you, when you build, you're not allowed to dig a hole too close to your friend's hole, and you're not allowed to to put uh, you're not allowed to put a hole next to your friend's uh, to your friend's uh, wall. Yeah. 
You're not allowed to do things that might endanger your friend. You're not allowed to, deal, to build the buildings so close to each other, yes? Just want to say, like, these kind of rules is not special to Buddhism. No. That's like all no. kinds of ancient, like, laws. That's right. Like, old Germanic law has the same rules, old Roman law. That's right. Where do they get it from? Yeah. Well, I don't no. know. No. Well, I would say the originated from no. I think that... No, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. it's, it's not like... But it's you, not. you're right. It's not, it's not special, but it makes sense. It sense. makes sense, and one and part of the laws are that you don't build too close to each other, so you you don't infringe on somebody's privacy. And then there's there's another law here. But these are not for anything environment; they are just not to harm your friends. Uh, true, true. Well, yeah. Property. Yeah. And here, and it's environmental as well. If your drainage on your building is not done well, okay, that can enjoy it, destroy an entire neighborhood. Uh, one building. Yeah, yeah, yeah one but, drainage. But, but, hey, but hey, these rules not to, not to. But technically, but holes, what were they built for? Well, why did you make a hole? These, he talks about these holes are cisterns. Times. Why these are cisterns. Cisterns, which cisterns, which is drainage and water, mm. correct? It's for drinking water, okay? So he's saying don't build one next to your friend's right. cistern. Right. Some it's it's not, not only for other. drinking, it's also for, for kvisan. Whatever, it doesn't yeah. matter. But I'm sure. saying that the reason is for your friend. The reason, I, the reason I brought it, actually, is for the fourth, the third one. Uh, Zayn. There's more, these are all laws for city. These are these are city uh, bylaws, yeah, or bylaws for building. And one of the bylaws says, "Malchikim et ha'ilan min ha'ir asrim v'chamesh ama, u'becharuv v'shikma chamishim ama." You don't plant trees too close to the city. And if you build a city and then there's trees there, you you uproot them, yeah. Abba Shul Omer Kol Ilan Srak Chamishim Ama. Im ha'ir kadma. If their city is before and somebody planted a tree there, clo too close to the city, then the city comes in and takes it out, and that doesn't have to pay anything. Because you've built too close to the city. you built too close to the walls. And ve'ima ilan kadam, but if the city expanded to the point where it infringes a somebody's, somebody's tree, you uproot the tree, but you pay the person. But don't we want those trees in the city? Oh. Okay, so now we're talking about you mean as, uh, not planting. It uh, grows as big as an ear is. Twenty-five ama outside of the the uh, outside of the city, you're not allowed to plant trees. For twenty-five on, you can Tw exactly twenty-five on as much as you but want. Are we talking about different types of trees? They're like orchards? There's, there's different types of trees. Some trees even further than 25. Some trees are closer. I, when I read this, when I learned this, I thought, obviously, this is for more reasons. So if you build, if there's trees too close to the walls of the city, it's dangerous. You're, 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 yeah, well, we grew up in, and we grow up in such a dangerous uh, militaristic point of view. Maybe it's for the fire. Like you think, yeah, you think of the fire, you think of enemies, you think of even even uh, oh, animals, yeah. even animals that can come too close to the city and they hide in the bushes and they can come in and they can come out. And then Rashi says, and the Gemara actually says that, Marchikim et ha'ilan min ha'ir, ba'gemara mefarish, mishum noyei ha'ir. It's not because of security reasons. It's so the pr the city will look prettier. It's prettier when there are no trees right on top of the city. When there's a little bit of a field, you have you have some open space, and then there's trees. It the city needs to needs to look nice. Nice. The fish It's beautiful. You know when they advertise new cities, when they advertise new new uh, neighborhoods, they just saw advertisements for neighborhoods in, in uh, where was it up north somewhere. And they look at the lush gardens, you know, and you have, you have uh, grass, and you have all these open spaces, open spaces, open spaces. Every, every yeah. real estate, you know, you look at the open spaces. <coughs> so Rashi says, yeah. The Mishnah says you shouldn't have trees too close to the city, so you'll have open spaces because it looks nice. It's beautiful. Here we are, you does it Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so either. I don't think so either. And also, what about shade? Forget about where we have our air conditioning. They needed shade. Where was Rashi living? There's no. Well, there's there's the trees. There's the trees inside the city. There's there's inside the city, and then there's the outside of the city. And the city, and there's a landscape outside the city, and in open spaces. And I think we all agree that if there's if there's open spaces, it looks nice. Whereas if everything is on top of each other, 
without order, and this gives order. This just gives order. It doesn't say no trees. It says 25 amma, which is about 12, 12 and a half meters, no trees. A little bit of space, a little bit of open space, so you can walk around the city. You don't have, you don't have to walk down in branches. And it looks nicer. There's a little pathway around, around the city. So you can take your kids in Shabbat. <laughs> Play some soccer. Speaking of which, in Tel Aviv, I have this new thing that uh, I'm trying to put a map of trees that you that are public trees, what they refer to as public trees that have that are fruit bearing. That you, yeah, you can you pay. Right. You see it? That's right. You it can started in Chicago. In Chicago, in, Chicago. <laughs> and in New York City also. New York City had yeah. That. So these are trees that are completely yeah. public, that are like in a gun here or a gun <clears> there or on the on the on the, in the a courtyard it. that are completely. Have care. Care. What's the problem? So no then problem. you can take the fruit. People go. It's yeah, yeah, it's how, how old, how old is a These are old trees. Oh, old trees. These are old and trees. And it's hefker, so it's for years. We have lemons and oranges and shesek and 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 uh, oh, uh, tuta e. It's uh, yeah, tuta. It's tuta. It's whatever it is. Yeah, it's not big. like the yeah, but not the yeah. like not the tree growing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now we get to the controversial sentence. Oh, it's okay. towards the end, so it's controversial. <laughs> and then you run. <laughs> <laughs> no, no schmooze, no? No, right, right. No right, schmooze, yes, yes, you yes, forgot schmooze. There's a schmooze. I never forget the schmooze. Schmooze about something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it says the Ramban, number 13. The Ramban says... Chidusha Ramban. Chidusha Ramban, yes. Masa Baba Bata. It says, de en osim lo sadeh mikrash velo mikrash sadeh. That's what the Gemara said. You don't... You have to have order. Either it's a field or it's a forest. You can't have a field and a forest uh, connected together. It doesn't look nice. Um, and then it says, "Lefichach ani omer the board, mishum shekach pirusha, the meikara." Ramban explains like this. We you, you would have thought, because I could not talk, mishum hezeku, vafilu bechutz nartz. You would have thought that the reason of not putting trees too close to the city is because of fires, because of animals, because of because of the hazards. You know, different things. Vekivan sheamar ula. The Mishum but Ula went out of his way in the Gemara to explain this is not about hazards. This is about beauty. Pshitali, she'enta kana zu ela be'eretz Yisrael. So the, the Ramban says this is only a kana in, in Eretz Yisrael. In Chutz La'aretz, build your trees as close to the city as you want to. Make it as ugly as you want to. But in Chutz Laaretz, it doesn't say ugly. Any minadin she yakev velo tiknu b'klu. Not caring. And says the Raman, v'halvai she tinavel b'fnei Yosef. Wow, wow, wow. That's harsh. That means what? That is harsh. It says. It says. I wish that Chutz Laaretz, that outside of Israel, would be disgusting. We're gonna say that that's the Raman that he was persecuted in Spain. I can't run away. Yeah, yeah, no. He said, well, I was about to say, where did Ramban live? Uh, Ramban lived in a beautiful place. Well, in Spain. But well, not in Israel, so... That's right. And, and, he, and, just and that's just about right. where he was, like, kicked out of. And I, 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 I think I wish to find this one nice. Told you it's controversial, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it says, Ramban says, it is obvious to me, says the Ramban, that the way that the Gemara wrote and, and was, was made sure to say that it shouldn't... It, it's only for beauty, and not for security reasons, not for anything else, <coughs> is to say that this is a mitzvah about Eretz Yisrael. Yeah. This is one of the mitzvot of Eretz Yisrael. In Eretz Yisrael, you should love the, la love the land and make it pretty. And in Chutz Laaretz, look at the bad things about it. Don't... Halvai, <laughs> it says Halvai. Chutz Laaretz has a lot of pretty places. Halvai that you won't look at the pretty places in Chutz Laaretz. That you won't get stuck outside of Eretz Yisrael, and you'd say, it's so beautiful, beautiful around here, Spain is so beautiful, why, why would I ever leave? You should always look at the beauty in Eretz Yisrael. Can I point something out? Yes, please. It's really, like a half day later from the Lord. Have you yes. been to Vatican City? I have. Okay, how many trees are actually inside the Vatican City? Mm -hmm. No, no, there are some because there is a park no. which behind the, the Almost church. None. No? Almost none. And one of the design reasons is because they, they, a lot of the commentary that if you read about the architecture and the design and how many years and why they took this and then it's, was based on philosophy of old, old, old Judaism of Jerusalem. Actually. Really? Well, there were no trees on the higher body. There was. No, there was oh, no wow, that's really right. interesting. Right. Yeah. The half the elf of the Lord, yeah. but that's that's the that's the architectural uh, background 
and talk. But you don't need trees that are white, but the rest of the place? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get, get it either. Yeah. I don't get this, but carry on. Well, there's a question of space, and then there's a question of, uh, of where you have and if you... And the, the point is, Israel, the land of Israel should be beautiful. Part of Zionism is to make the land of Israel prettier. That's the first thing you did when they came. Part, of, part of Zionism is to plant trees and to care about it. And if, and if you see people throwing something on the floor, that's, that's hashkata. That's terrible. It's a terrible thing. It's, it's destroying the land of Israel. It's anti-Zionistic to throw things on the floor here. In America? Sure. For, uh, just throw it on the floor. And, uh, we don't do it. But the Ramban says the mitzvah is, uh, well, the Ramban also says that we do mitzvah in Chutzah as practice to when we're in Eretz Yisrael. Uh -huh. So you practice good environmentalism in Chutzah, it's according to the Ramban, only so when you come to Eretz Yisrael, you'll, you'll do it the right way. You'll do it the right way. And the tool says the same thing. The tool says I, I those mitzvot are only in Chutzah, or only in Eretz Yisrael, and in Chutzah as well, he agrees that halvai Chutzah will not be pretty in the eyes of, of the dwellers, of the Jewish dwellers there. Mm -hmm. Jewish dwellers should only see the beauty of Israel. Because otherwise they'll stay in places like Italy. Mm -hmm. True, absolutely. There's a simpler way to look at this building, of, uh, planting of the trees uh, um, not too close to the wall, that has more to do with how trees grow. I mean, you, you want to make sure, if, if, if the plan is not to cut down trees, particularly fruit trees, ah, that's trees, a good point. Then that's a good you point. want to plant them so close to the wall that they're going to grow so roots. big and so yeah. close that you're going to have to cut them down. Absolutely. So it just makes sense. That's a good point. That's, that's a good point. That is, it's, an, it's an excellent point. But the, the, the Ramban says that... None of them have said this. I'm just saying that's right. what makes sense to me. It, it, it makes perfect sense. But the Ramban says that he learns that the reason that they didn't mention that, even though it makes perfect sense, and in, in an agricultural society, when they know how to raise, grow trees much better than we know, I mean, it would, be, it would have been obvious for them, mm -hmm. but they don't mention that, and they say it's for the beauty of the city. He says that's just because you have to make it so beautiful. Because this is part of it. But I think and I that, would posit that that, that think, is part of the beauty of the city. I mean, if you look at the okay. trees yeah. that are planted on 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 where they've, they've, they 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 look they look like uh, there's a science fiction story about trees that talks about them as, as living beings. Um, but oh. but they're 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 just cut off, and and because of the because of the. Uh, electrical wires and everything, and they, yeah. and they look like stumped, stumped yeah. war veterans. They, yeah. they look, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the saddest thing ever. Well, not the saddest thing ever, but you understand it's what sad. I'm saying. And so, so you don't, you don't want that, and it's unlovely. It's definitely not lovely. So, if you want lovely, you're going to have to cultivate the trees to look lovely. So the same thing. Exactly. So the same not thing. Cut them off. Same thing. You, you put them in a place where they can grow yeah. and where they can be beautiful. No, but There's we no. want it in the city where we walk here at Dolce Barcelona. We want the, the no, shade. We're not in the city. We just want the gun yeah, here. So they're, they're, they're not saying they're, they can't be in the city. They're talking about planting but them outside the city But does it also say well. that they can't be in the city? It doesn't say that they can't be in the city. It's called the isn't it? Huh? It's called the isn't it? I don't know if it's called the Homer, because if you're, if you're looking at, if you have open spaces in the city, then you can put shades there, and you can, you can put trees there for shade, you can use them, there's no problem with it. Because if you was like to the outside of the city, you're saying? <laughs> I, I think it's okay. outside of the city. I think this is just talking about the outside wall, but it's not necessarily a Kalvah Homer. It's, it's not, not a Kalvah Homer. Um, because if it's your logic, that's, you know, because the roots found the wall, then in the city is even worse. Depending on how close it is to a building. Depends, exactly. So you have a huge area of 25 years of which it will be nothing for one tree. But I think that, I think also, I, I think that this has to do with why this is important in the Mishnah of Hilchot Ha'il, of what do you do in the city. So if it's right for that part of the city, then you can put a tree there. And if it's beautiful, even better. But if, if you don't, if it doesn't make sense at that point, if it's too close to a, to a building, if it's too close to a water hole, then obviously you wouldn't put it there, so it won't destroy the water hole, it won't destroy the, the walls. Hmm. We'll finish with the, I, I think we should, uh, there's, there's a few more things, but I think we're, we're at a good place. I think we've, we've, reached, we've reached a place where you can understand the, the point. We don't have to look at every single 
uh, thing that I put on the paper, even though I worked very hard to put things on the no, paper. Maybe it's just, very, very maybe hard for me. Just, no, 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 no. Maybe it just he had to just put a contrapoint somehow, because if he on the one said, on one hand, it's sad that planting trees is a bit slow and all these things. He wanted just to avoid people going crazy about planting trees everywhere. I grew up in California. I grew up in California and I've seen I've seen it when people go crazy with this. You know, where, where people take it take it to a to a complete extreme. Hugging trees huh? Hugging on trees, for example. Uh, hugging trees is fine, but you know when you hug trees and you stifle everything else around it. I think that's uh, it's a little extremist. Do you have more time, by the way? We're here till midnight because we want to hear the owl. The owl. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah. That's a different bird. Oh, so yeah. let me go back. Wow. Let me go back to uh, <laughs> the first page. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, it's fine. It doesn't keep you awake. It's actually when the lights are off, they don't make the noise. Oh, oh. It's like uh, it's already already till twelve o'clock. That's a smart bird. It's like it's very smart. It's a very smart bird. It's the owl. I think that I think that a show. The Rashaun Hirsch gives gives a nice summation cool. of of what we look what we what we spoke about today. And he says that Hazara Makifa Biotel, the the most number broad the, yes, the number fifteen in bold, mm -hmm. the broadest warning to a person that he, he shouldn't abuse his place in this world, dvarim mm -hmm. siba. He shouldn't just destroy things. Things without reason. Just because all of a sudden you feel like destroying things or, or you're angry and you're not, you don't control yourself. God gave us this land. And Ashagir doesn't say that we are equal to every being in this world, but we have to do, we have to be smart about it and we have to be benevolent about it. You should use this world and you should be part of this world. And I think it, it adds on to what we said before. You should make use of this world and be out of this world, not just to take advantage of the, of the world in the best way, but also to teach yourself how to be a better person. By treating the world nicely, by making good use and, and, and even use of the world, and not treating this world that, okay, now that I'm mad, I can get away with anything that I want to. That's where Bata Shrit comes in. That's where the, the obligation not to destroy things for nothing comes in. Because if you keep a calm, a calm way of an outlook on life, and if you look at life in an even manner, then you see how the world presents for you many opportunities to grow. When you grow the trees, and, and we spoke, and I think you spoke before about our workers in Botanica and how they grow things. And our workers that have been there for months, they've started with uh, seeding, you know, and then they plant, and then they, they see they see the things grow. Part of what we do, and, and this is something that my uh, the manager in Botanica, Amos, is excellent at. He goes out to uh, cocktail, the right here down down next to the botanic gardens. The he goes down to to uh, the nursery, and he rescues things that are no longer uh, sellable. They put them on the side because they can't sell it to gardeners, they can't sell it to people. So they just throw it away. So he goes and he rescues them and, re and he rehabilitates yeah. roses yeah. and rehabilitates yeah. the plants. Yeah. Yeah. And we take them a few, and if you walk around the Tachana oh, by near. and you see the trees, then you see we've taken them and we've planted in the trees. You know, they have those, yeah, yeah, yeah. the trees are in the big oh, ugly oh. dolphin. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've planted and around us you see, the, the closer you get to our dome, the, the greener it is. Because we're well, going. But you see, you see the mention of that. What people think is not saleable. Things people people think that they can't work. And that's you're right. taking the same people. Absolutely. And uh, absolutely, that's that's our world in rehabilitation. It's it's a, and it's a beautiful way. And when you pay attention, when you pay attention to, and we started by paying attention to people, moved on to plants. Yeah. But it's easier to pay attention to plants yeah. and then to look up at people. And then to and then to move on to to people. I'm just I do things yeah. very unconventional way. You're talking about Nier's company. In, which company? Owned by Nier. Nier too. Yeah. Yes. So Nier is in the bazaar, and uh, the bazaar was very good to us, very kind to us to give us a place, so we don't have to pay rent there. 
We stay there. In so we try we try to take we, we try to influence our and, and we try to make waves over there. We try to start from, from our little seats and in our little place and we try to move on and I think we're making a difference. Uh, we're definitely making a difference with the people who walk by and the people who walk by and they come and they see the people working and many of them don't even know that it's a social it's a social business. You, you wouldn't be able to tell it's a social business unless we come out and tell you. We're I bought soil there. I had no clue. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Soil is good. It's good. good profit. But it's heavy. It's a heavy place. Are you guys open every day? We're open every day. Uh, I did. I bought when I moved and I put planters on them. I bought soil there. Beautiful. So you probably spoke to Amos when you were there. You saw Amos with the hat, with the smile, with the energy. And this is this is where we try to go to. And I think that uh, uh, the most famous most famous quote is number sixteen. Most famous quote about environmentalism. I think it appears everywhere. We know that it appears on on Amos's email, uh, and it's been there for a long time. It says, "B'sha'a shabarat kadosh baruch hu etadam arishon when Hashem created the man, netalov v'chazriu al kol ilanei gan Eden. He showed him all of the trees in Eden." In the gun. Look how beautiful my, my trees are. Look how beautiful my my actions are, my, my deeds are. It's my sight. It's my deeds and it's the things that I've created, my creations. Look how beautiful my creations are. And everything that I created, I created for you. Pay attention. That you will not go and destroy my world. I'm giving this to you, to use. And, and as we said in usage, it's the wider sense of world. Sefer HaChinuch says that we should use it so we develop ourselves and we develop our souls. By using the world, meaning you pay attention, you take care of the world, so you develop yourself. I think it's an argument with the Ishayahu. We say, Kol Shabbat Yishmi Olchudi Boati. It's a reverse, true? It's a... Uh, uh, you know, I think, it, I think that if... if and the, the, it's a good point that if, and I think that it fits together with it because if we take care of the land, if we take care of what Hashem created, that's the kavod of a kadosh baruch Hu. That's Hashem's honor by us becoming better people by taking care of the plants. Ten da atcha shelo tekalkel v'tachir v'tolami sheim kilkat. If you destroy, there's no one else to fix. If you destroy the world, if there's no one else to fix after you. And uh, I hope that we take. Uh, we take this in Mesilat Yisholim Der He repeats the same point, and the point of of this night, and the point of I think a Jewish thought that comes out in environmentalism as well is that you have to care about details, and you have to care about about even little things. And the more you care about details, the more you enjoy the the world. The more you enjoy the world, the more love you have in your heart. The more love you have in your heart. More you love you have to Hashem and to your fellow pe fellow people. So it all starts with appreciations of even little things. And the more we pay attention, and the more we look around and pay attention to uh, to things around us, the more we do Hashem's will, and the more we can we can uh, fulfill the Hashem's Hashem's wants. I think that I started by uh, talking about my my life and how I grew up in the nursing home, and I remember so many times I. I grew up. I, uh, my father had a nurse, uh, had a business here for, uh, for wheelchairs and also mattresses. And when I when I was twelve, we moved over to America, and he continued that that business and expanded it. And I grew up in nursing homes, but I was the son of the president of the company, so I could do whatever I want basically. So I walked around a lot in nursing homes, and I didn't have to rush and work and you know make my quotas and everything, which I did. Whatever, I'm good self. But I, I read my quotas, but I had the opportunity to sit down and pay attention to people. And, and I remember this one man, and he was sitting in his room. And he says, help me, help me, help me. And I, and I went, and I said, yes, sir, how can I help you? And he didn't really need help. He just needed somebody to see him. He just needed somebody to stop and look at him and see him. So I sat with him and I listened to his stories for an hour and a half. Wow. I had the opportunity to be able to do that. 
And I think I did that when I was 16, and I grew up, and I grew up with looking at people who are invisible to the world. And I think if we look at people who are invisible to the world, and it's not just people with mental illness, it's not just the elderly, it's also the bus driver. It's also the person bagging the groceries. It's also the person that's just standing there or doing some menial, seemingly menial job. If you stop and you pay attention, you say hello, and the guard in the university, I, pay, I make sure that I write down the name of the guards at the university. I'm doing my PhD at the university. So I, I know the guards' names. So when I, when I walk in the gates, I know, I know the names, and then I can call them by name. And you know, when you call, when you call Shai by, by his name, he looks at you, what? And, and Vitali that, that stands in the hotel in, in Malon Shalom, when I come in and I say, hello Vitali, how are you doing today? He's like, what? How do, we, how do you know my name? Right. What do you mean? There's right. thousands of people walking by and nobody knows his name. And when you, when you pay attention to people, when you pay attention to the world, <coughs> that's our environmentalism, that's our Echut HaSivivai, that's our Echut Chaim. And I hope we all make small and small steps towards looking at other people and looking at the, at the world in a better place and we'll become better people. Thank you very much yeah. for your attention. Yeah. Thank you. What's your connection to Malam Shalom?